When I first talked to David about the film, it was always about this way that we each play a role in order to manifest survival. Go ahead, ready? One, two, three, go! The themes of this movie are love, reinvention, and identity. As you survive, how do you have to reinvent yourself, and what, what happens to your love? It's great cinema, I think, because it's characters you care about in a world that's very exciting. Nothing ever dies. Nothing ever gets monotonous. Nothing ever gets boring or dull. It's all fresh. It's all new, and it's exciting, and it's adrenaline every day. I always look for characters um, and worlds. I think anytime you're a writer or a director, you're looking for something that has a lot of heart and soul that you can mine very deeply. Charles Roven, Richard Suckle, guys I've known for a very long time, had worked on this material with Eric Singer. It was a story I always wanted to tell, because it was so great. We started looking at this, and I started to think, God, these characters are kind of amazing. And it had the, it's a chemical thing. I felt it immediately. I felt the chemical thing that I felt with the people of The Fighter or the people of Silver Linings. This was a case of another true story, American Hustle, that was based on events and people who just leapt off the page. The characters were just vivid, unlike any I'd ever seen before. David, once he became involved, the driving force became the characters and something that he knew that he could make his own and therefore make into a, quote, David Russell movie, unquote, uh, that pulled everybody in. In all the films that he's made, his films are about people and their search for something better. There is a reckoning that they have in their lives, and that's one of the things that I think would make David Russell films so singular and unique. David is one of the most gifted writers I've ever come across. And one of the reasons is because he really does inhabit every character that he writes about. I'm like the Viet Cong, man, all right? I'm in and I'm out. I was there the whole time. You don't know it, all right? That's an art of becoming somebody who people can pin their beliefs and their dreams on. You can't do it. We had this script, which was filled with these incredible moments. And you almost say at one point, it's like, how can you pack this much movie in 41 days, that's not going to be easy. You know going in that's going to be hard. Cheers. It's, um, I'm sorry. What? Cheers. These actors all committed to the movie before David had finished writing it. Uh, and in some cases, before David had even started writing it, just based on their conversations, on their trust in him, on their previous relationships with David. David writes drama in such a wonderful way that it is never, it's never one tone. All of, his, all of his drama, even his dramatic scenes, are exciting and funny and intriguing and interesting and confusing. And he just has this way of looking at the world and looking at people that when he expresses himself, it's a very exciting thing to watch because you never really know what you're going to get. None of his characters are really predictable. He knows their voices. He knows their mannerisms. He knows everything about them to a point where when he's throwing out an idea, it's real, it's genuine. It's not like he's just saying, try this on for size. It's coming from a place because it is within the DNA of the character that he created and wrote. I got very excited because I knew I had a great character for every actor that they had never played. And the audience has never seen. This guy right here, he's got a big heart. Guys like you and me, we dream and we build. We never give up, we never quit. The cast is really extraordinary. We were unbelievably uh, blessed to actually to have, you know, in one movie, having real significant roles. Christian and Amy and Bradley and Jeremy and Jennifer. You're only as good as who you get to work with. You feel very, very lucky to be surrounded by such tremendous talent. I think having a chance to work with Christian Bale and Amy Adams, people that I admired a lot, uh, that was very thrilling to be on set with them every day and to sort of be in the trenches and have to show up and match them. That was incredible. 
I think that's the biggest takeaway. It's just, and then be sort of in awe of what they were doing. I can't speak highly enough the working with each actor and what they brought to the experience of working on this film. Everybody, it's kind of sick how, <laughs> how great everybody was. There's a showmanship in storytelling, whether you're telling a story to your child at bedtime or whether you're telling audiences all over the country in theaters, you must have a certain excitement or magic. And I feel that excitement when I know that Christian Bell is going to play somebody I've never seen him play. Christian is legendary for throwing himself into roles. You don't see Christian as Christian, you just see him as the characters. Irving Rosenfeld, he create this, and it's this sort of languorous demeanor, and he's very soft-spoken, and it's really kind of wonderful. Is that Duke Ellington on your bracelet? Yeah, as a matter of fact, it is. He died this year, you know? I know. I doubt anyone else here knows or cares about it. Well, I care about it. He saved my life many times. Mine too. He just looked like a fascinating man and, um, and uh, far more interesting than I'd imagined. Not this sort of slick wheeler dealer, not at all. You know, there was something very raw about him all the time. He wasn't necessarily in good shape and he had this comb over that was rather elaborate. He had this air about him. I'm not gonna play it without trying to, you know, uh, uh, adopt his physicality, his body type. And David was going, really, you're doing that? And I was like, yes, I'm doing that. Absolutely, David, there's no question. He's like, all right, you don't have to go too far, but you know, I ended up, you know, I mean, I was, I, was, I was over 40 pounds heavier than my normal weight, you know, by the end. He was who he was, he didn't care. There was something in the air about this guy, and we had to figure it out. That was exciting to me for every one of these characters. My dream was to become anyone else other than who I was. She's just an extremely complex character that was really fascinating to develop. I mean, I've never played somebody who is so, you know, I've played a lot of layered characters, but this is the only one that like, you peel back a layer and it's like, there's another layer and then another, and then even then, you have to approach it with no judgment. Everybody at the bottom crosses paths eventually in a pool of desperation, and you're waiting for them. How about we? She's only living in order to adapt to each situation, becoming what she thinks she needs in order to survive. At the core of it, to me, it was a love story. They're not just criminals trying to steal things. They're, they're people like anybody else who want to live the magic that anybody else wants to live. I felt like we had a secret, just the two of us. You know, like that thing when you just want to be with the one person the whole time and you feel like the two of you understand something that nobody else gets. Let's go. Well, anytime you do a movie with David, um, I know that it's gonna be, it's gonna have to take me to places emotionally that, that aren't comfortable but are real and uh, he demands that you explore things in an organic way that that you can't really think about. So I knew that like he wanted Richie in the movie to be this sort of unhinged, dangerous, uh, yet at the same time very vulnerable and childlike character. He's had to live his whole life as a decent, good guy, and this is his chance just to explode. Everybody thought, oh, Richie DeMasso's gonna stay in the office pushing papers. That's not gonna happen, Mom. I'm outside on the field. I got people working for me, my ideas. I'm running the show, I'm the quarterback, and I'm not gonna settle for no one, Mom. They kind of do it wrong epically, and we get to see how their interactions with one another create this chaos. You also have a very volatile and unpredictable wife at home. Rosalind is either very up or very down. She's certainly someone who is not without issues, to say the least. He doesn't love you, Rosalind. He loves me, and you know it, and I know it, and he knows it. And it might be done now, but it was beautiful, and it was real. And Stop. we loved each other. Shut up. You scare him, and you manipulate him, and you use your son. Well, he must like it on some level. He must want it, because he keeps coming back for it. It's like that perfume that you love that you can't stop smelling, even when there's something sour in it. You can't get enough of it. I found her struggle kind of really interesting, that concept of not wanting to be alone so much that you would rather be unhappy with somebody, because I think our ideas of what our lives should be sometimes overwhelm what our lives actually are. We're not happy, all right? 
You know that I could take Danny. You know that most of your work is illegal. And you know that if you tried to divorce me, you know that I'm not saying that I would, but I'm saying that I could. And I'm saying that that is why I don't like divorce, Irving. Women do that in divorces. Women get the children and then the fathers never see them. My mother never got divorced. My grandmother never got divorced. There are no divorces in my family. I am not getting a divorce. I want the women to be as strong as the male characters, and I want them to be very powerful presences. Um, I think the whole movie elevates to an extremely rich world when the women are, are strong, extremely strong, and extremely complicated. I'm gonna do these four pasts, these four cons, to get us out of this, not just me, but us. And I'm gonna get really close with Richie, the cop, in case we need to use him if we need another move. We don't need another move. We need four busts and we're done. We are gonna need another move, trust me. And you're gonna be thanking me. The key to people is what they believe or what they want to believe. So I want to believe that we were real. We are real. And I want to believe that a man could want me. And I'm gonna take all of that heartbreak and all of that sorrow and I am going to use it. And I'm going to make Richie think that I want him and that I like him. And I want to be very, very convincing. Maybe I do like him. Maybe I like him a lot. From the feet up, right? Baby. Carmine Polito was mayor of Camden, New Jersey, and the leader of the State Assembly of New Jersey. He's a complicated, interesting, character. I spoke with senators and governors and even mayors just to see how that world works, what the shorthand of dialogue is, because it was a world that I'm so unfamiliar with. There's moral ambiguity in there, for sure. There's, you know, it's not black and white. It's, laws are black and white. People are not black and white. There's a lot of gray in there. Everything I do is for the good of the people of New Jersey. Everything I do is for them. Everybody's trying to actually make themselves better. They're just doing it wrong, <laughs> you know? I don't like that you're in jail while he's going free. I don't like any of that. I want to help you. All the razzle-dazzle that he does, it's not good. It's not real. It's fake. It's not real. Who you are is who you are between you and God. You and your soul. That's what matters. That's what counts. That's what I'm about. And that's what I see in you. Tell me you didn't feel the first time we saw each other. Am I crazy? I don't think so. I'm supposed to be talking like this, but I don't care. I break the rules. Okay, eat it. Eat it. I want to help you. I like you. I like you. I like you. We're playing in the late 70s in a specific area of the country, the clothing, the hair, and, and none of that takes precedent over the emotional life. All right. Where are you? I'm You're here. acting all scary, okay? I'm, I'm are you here, here with okay, me? Yeah. I love you. It is real now. I just, I just said it. I so love the elegance of that era. The designers, Michael Wilkinson, Judy Becker, created a world that was beautiful, but real. What are you doing, going behind my back? Telling people I'm screwing up this operation? The what food? is this? What is this? You got like one in my closet or something? No. Are you dressing no. him like you dress me? No, what are you thinking? This isn't all about what, you. What, are you, you trying to dress right? me so I would look like no, him? No, you're not dressed like him. Right? I do look, I look like him. To a costume designer, being presented characters like this is the biggest gift. It's what we all dream about. Woo! You look fantastic. I can only dream about these dresses are beautiful. Ah. Oh. What we wear reflects our personalities, our background, our aspirations, lots of subconscious kind of messages. We can help tell that story and show the arcs of the characters. You playing me? You're gonna have to decide for yourself, Kit. I just laid everything out on the table. Everyone's exterior is helping to inform their interior. Their wardrobe is part of their armor. Well, it really did help inform the confidence of Sydney. You look beautiful, by the way. Don't look at me, all right? Don't look at my legs, don't look at my hair, don't smell my hair, don't ask me how I am, don't talk to me outside of these roles, because we're done. Just stand still, get under the umbrella, come on. Just. Carmine wants Rosalind to come. I don't care. 
If you weren't listening, I don't care if Rosalind comes. Just do your job, okay? You're nothing to me until you're everything. This film is all about human interaction, the dynamics between different personalities, and exploring what physical manifestations there are of that as far as people's clothing choices and what they wear. That's what I live for, that's what I love doing. One of the things that I wanted was for her to not know how to dress for her body. Everything kind of looked a little awkward, like she never really knew how to dress herself. It was very sexy, the way the clothes fit. I think we all enjoyed wearing those suits and the platform shoes and the, the chains and the pinky rings and everything. Oh, oh on, no, no, Irving, Scott. Come on, you're right. I love also the notion that Irv is this con man who's a consummate con man. But he's doing this thing with his hair as if any of us are conned by that. You know what I mean? It's this great contradiction that happens within people. It makes such a difference. It makes you walk different. It makes you feel different. It makes your attitude different about everything. It looks so beautiful. Oh, so this is the lobby. Look at the detail. This is beautiful. Aside from Three Kings, I'd say it's the biggest in scope visually of all his movies. There's so many worlds, that's what drew me to it. It was not just all the characters, but how many worlds it traversed. We had a lot of locations, I think maybe 175, a huge amount. The use of textures and of materials was really important in the design and the decoration, and something I got very inspired by when I was researching the period. Those textures are as important as the colors to defining the characters. I want it to feel like a real world so that the audience gets lost in it. I do want them to look at Rosalind's house and think a little bit about the design and what that says about her character, but I don't want them to be doing that to the point where they're staring at a lamp in the corner and they're not looking over there where Rosalind is sitting. All right, you happy? Yes, I am happy. I want the audience to be focused on what's important, which is the story of the movie and the characters in the movie. You curl your hair in little curlers, which is, no, it's okay, you look good with it, but, you know, you have straight hair, so that's what you do to survive. You do all sorts of things, you know, we all do. Please don't talk about that. You're renovating, right? This could be one of the most beautiful pieces of film that I had the privilege of collaborating on. I think that there's a lushness to the way Linus shot the film with Jeff and Greg. I think this will be the most sort of cinematic movie David's directed to date. Because we're lit for 360, 360 degrees, the camera can, can go any place, any time. It's over. I don't think so. What? What do you mean? Because when Telegio finds out what happens, you think he's going to go after me? Someone from the Bureau. Then he's gonna go after a politician. He's gonna kill you. And he's gonna go after your son. And Sydney. You never know when you're gonna be called off the bench to get right in there and try to score two points. You'll think you'll be doing Christian's coverage and then it'll turn it right around on you. So you always have to be ready. When you light a room for 360, it's you're you're in a play. You have to be like ready and on. You have to bring it, man. You got to bring a lot. It's a live play. Everyone plays. A steady cam can be like a person in the room. We light through the windows with lights or natural sources or through the ceiling, so it just looks like a room. And then they can move in that environment. I like to feel their eyes. I like to not be too far removed from what they're feeling. Sometimes I think that I'll die before I change. <laughs> David's gonna push everybody to bring 110% of their A game. You know that you're going to make something that's going to be unique and special and stand the test of time. Steve, you hear Mark? I wanna do and never stop doing throughout the entire production for every actor and every character, finding every detail or every behavior, every uh, action that they can do that will be fascinating and emotional. And I'm never uh, not open to any idea that might come from, from anywhere about that. This is the ocean. The shooting schedule and the process is lean and mean so that people are there for the right reasons. They're there for the passion of the project. Once the camera starts rolling, we're gonna do take after take and really get deep in it and get lost in it. There's nothing I cherish more and respect more than 
the actors and their trust that we share together and doing that together. Without that, there really is no movie. David understands something that a lot of people don't understand. It's hard, it's hard to remember what's most important when you're making a movie, and that's the performance, and it's the characters and what they're saying. And it's really easy to get distracted by everything else, but all David cares about is the characters and the performance, and everything else has to work around that. He never sits at the monitors, ever. He never has a trailer. He never leaves set. You see him on set and he's in it. There is no downtime. It's always in motion. The yeah. equation is constantly changing. We're throwing this in and that in, and then it's coming from left field and right field. But David really does know exactly what he's doing and what he wants and why he wants it. It's like a sculpture. He, he likes to sit there and mold it as it's happening. He's all about the heart and soul of the characters. There's a frenetic energy that I think David loves, and um, the feeling that you're up against the wall every day, and how are we going to make our day, and all that pressure creates this very palpable energy on set. Because of that, that, that you see that in the acting, because it's real. I want to face Who's you like a man because I want to be real now. Who's all they? Right. <sighs> Who's they? They is the feds. The feds? Yeah. Irving? I, I, I'm a good person. You're a good person. I've been doing this for a long time, for 20 years. Do you think I would have taken that money if it wasn't the right thing to do? I look, huh? I look, you're a good person. I know that. You know, but in all honesty, you said that was the only way, Irv. You, you chased me. Do you remember? The real brilliance about what David's doing with all of this is that he gives you something to think about without being judgmental. There has to be a, something a little bit wild in any great performer that I am going to love, I think. A little bit, a little bit crazy in a human way. I think it's true of Jennifer Lawrence, it's true of uh, Christian Bale, big time. They're channeling the power of humanity in all of its colors. You know where I was recently? I was in the Boyfriend's car. All right, I saw your nail polish. Put a canvas bag over my head! Are you happy now? Because he is trying to kill me! What are you what talking are you about? Doing? You have monster talent walking in the room. It's such an embarrassment of riches with the level of talent in this movie, who are already fearless actors. Um, who David then wants to even push beyond that comfort zone. You watch other actors come on set who haven't been able to have that kind of freedom, and it's very uh, almost unnerving initially. I mean, you really watch somebody go through the whole trajectory emotionally. When they do let go, it's just magic, and by the end of it, they almost always say, or always say, you know, it was the best experience they ever had. One's more adult-oriented, one's more kid-oriented. He knows how to push you, and you want to be pushed, you want to be better. It's almost like having a coach with something athletic that tells you you can run a certain distance. It pushes you and then you run there and you and you feel great and you feel inspired and he gets ideas and the second they come into his head, they come out of his mouth. And that's the way that we're all working and it's very high energy. It's such imagination and such vision. I mean, the, the, the guy sees it. I always want to avoid a notion of technique. And I get the same sense a little bit with David of him going, I don't want to have this technique. You know, I want to have this rawness. I want to be doing things that are wrong by conventional standards. I want to be changing the scene in the middle of it. And you get used to that and it becomes great, you know? And so, and so you get something unusual when you're watching the, the film. You get a sense of invention on the spot and very much it is. Congratulations. Here you have a great I hear you have a great Tell them, tell Just imagine if things happening in this office, right? We're not just working in a box. I'm going to ask the actors not to be precious about their performances. I can't be that precious about the screenplay either or the direction. And so it's a two way street of, of collaboration. And they may have choices that are very important to them. And I may have choices that are very important to me. And I'm happy to do both, you know, then I'll, and very often in the edit room, I'll say, thank God we did that other choice that I wasn't so sure of that they wanted, because I was wrong. What he's doing on the set, he's doing in the cutting room, his approach to getting people to lose their cerebral selves and, and just feel the material, that's constantly what, what the challenge is. Who starts a song like that? It's magic. It's a very musical movie to me. You know, that's the trifecta, emotion and character, camera movement 
and music. It's the soul of his films. It has to be having really a lot of heart and a lot of emotion. It's so very much about his characters. When you can find a song like 10538 Overture and have it belong to this movie, that to me is the most fantastic thing. That's why I'm there, you know, to be moved or tickled. That's, if, I, if I feel it, then the movie feels it. When the actors are doing it and, and they're feeling it, there's a great delight that I feel. It's very funny to see that, you know, but he's completely immersed, totally invested. And that's why I like it, you know, because I love that immersion with people. There's this great sort of very raw dynamic between the two of us, which I enjoy greatly. There's an energy that's on set when you, when the people are actually jazzed about what they're making and they actually believe and and what and when you actually love what you're saying as an actor and you love reading and loving what you're going to get to say and what you're going to get to do and who you're going to get to work with and there's there's a passion and a, an energy that feeds every kind of hunger that I have as an actor. When you're in a world of characters that you can personally feel and ideas come to you and you're working with actors that you have a lot of trust with and, and you feel free to create. I mean, so many beautiful things happen. Life will give you plenty of darkness to deal with is my perspective. So I like seeing the people who have enchantment, they love life. I feel real fortunate and real lucky to be doing what I'm doing and to be doing it with the people I get to work with. Of survival is a story that never ends. Cut the figures.